So let me uh, first thank Hans Hoppe and Gülchen for having me here, speaking for the first time at a Property and Freedom Society. And um, let me apologize first for my poor English, but I have been studying it at Italian State School, so you can understand. And um, so let's go through the subject we chose this with Professor Hoppe last year and as I finished my presentation half an hour ago, so we can find, you, you can understand that it's a well thought subject. So uh, we have a, let's call it a standard libertarian view of the confrontation between two different attitudes of uh, cope with the problem of scarcity in society, which are, uh, it should be supposed to be one by one, but I don't know why it doesn't work like that. Anyway, we have a, this dichotomic presentation of the two different ways to cope with the problem of the uh, acquisition of wealth in societies. Uh, Franz Oppenheimer was not a true libertarian, but anyway, on his uh, uh, fundamental distinction between the economic means to, for the satisfaction of needs and the political means for the satisfaction of needs. Such libertarian thinkers like Albert J. Nock, Ludwig von Mises, and Murray Rothbard built a lot of their social philosophy. And, uh, you know, in a very short way, for those who are not familiar with uh, Franz Oppenheimer, uh, there are just two methods to uh, acquire wealth one is work, and the other is robbery and uh, work and exchange on one hand and, the, in, and robbery on the other side. And in uh, Franz Oppenheimer's uh, uh, very effective words, the state is the organization of the political means. The fact that political power is necessarily the appropriation of, um, of wealth uh, given nothing in exchange. So, um, and uh, for those who are familiar with the thought of Ayn Rand, I'll, remi I'll um, remind you the uh, Howard Rourke's court's courtroom speech in the Fountainhead when the hero of this uh, novel, and perhaps m many of you have seen the movie with uh, uh, Gary, uh, Gary Cooper, Cary Grant. Um, there is a very effective uh, speech by the, the main character and when uh, he states that uh, the creator uh, is, uh, the creator's concern is the conquest of nature, the parasite's concern is the conquest of man, the creator uh, deals with man by free exchange and voluntary choice, the para parasite seeks power. So, um, uh, there's a, um, there's a, uh, an essay by Hans Hoppe on, uh, class, uh, on uh, Austrian and uh, Marxian class struggle. Uh, because Austrians and Marx share the view uh, of uh, the history of mankind as a struggle between exploiter and exploited. The, uh, the main difference is, is that for Marx, the reason for the exploitation is main due to economic factors Mm, while for libertarians and Austrians the causes of the exploit exploitation are due to, um, to political fact, to political reasons. Uh, I, I bumped into a letter of Karl Marx in which he acknowledges that the idea of class struggle, class struggle came to him from previous uh, bourgeois historians and economists. So I wondered who were those guys, those bourgeois guys who inspired the Marxian view of the, um, of the history as the story of class struggle. I don't know why, but this slide, this slide goes as it should. The first guy is the uh, French sociologist and um, the Count of Saint-Simon, he was a, a French aristocrat. And with his uh, distinction uh, bet uh, between workers and idlers, uh, ac according to, to Saint-Simon, um, society is composed by two, conf 
two conflicting classes, workers on the one side, travailleurs in French, and on the other side, the idlers, les oisifs. Um, the former are those who produce wealth, and uh, the latter are those who live at their expense by wielding political power. And uh, we have uh, two followers of Saint-Simon, Enfantin and Bazar, wrote uh, a book at the beginning of the 30s. That's important for, my, um, for what we are going to see. Um, in this uh, presentation of the doctrine of Saint-Simon, they stated that the history of man is the, a story of exploitation. So uh, we will see why it is important for uh, the anticipation of Marx's statement in the manifesto. The, uh, another interesting French guy is the brother of Auguste Blanqui, the well-known French socialist uh, and revolutionary. If you go through France, you'll find in every Fran French city squares and uh, streets in honor of Auguste Blanqui. If you are a socialist in France, it's much more uh, likely to have streets and, and plays in squares than if you are a classical liberal. And uh, this, this French guy confronted in, the, uh, in um, two principles, uh, fighting in the story of mankind, and he calls those principles the principle of exploitation and the principle of freedom. And the fact that in every uh, society there are two parties uh, st struggling, the party of the people who live by their own work and the party of the people who work uh, through others' work. And among the means through which people can live on others' works, he includes taxation, monopolies, and tariffs. That's, that's our, the, the main, the main uh, political means in the um, Oppenheimer's, Oppenheimer's words. And uh, in uh, Blanqui's view, there's a contrast between animals and humans. Between animals, it's, uh, animals are, are bound to, to, uh, to devour each other. It's in their nature uh, to, 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 to do that, to, to uh, survive, to struggle for survival in that, way, in that way. For human species, there's something different because there, uh, this struggle is inside the human species. It, it's not a way to, uh, to struggle between different species, but it's a behavior which is inside the, the human species and which introduces a difference between that part of humanity which devours the other. And uh, why um, I stressed before the fact that uh, who were, I, I, I were wondering on who were the, um, those bourgeois thinkers who anticipated Marx in uh, his view uh, of the story of mankind as a story of class struggle. Because if you remember the, the slide of the uh, Saint Simon's followers with story as the exploitation of man on, on man, and you, if, you, uh, if you take the, 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 the sentence of Planqui, which is from a book of 1837, and if you take the very beginning of uh, the manifesto of the Communist Party of Marx, you, you can you can uh, uh, realize that almost literally Marx copied the words of uh, uh, Enfantin et Bazar and of Blanqui. So the beginning of the manifesto is uh, a, almost a, a plagiarian reproduction of, of an idea of a class struggle, but uh, a class struggle in a bourgeois uh, in, uh, according to bourgeois uh, reconstruction. So um, one of the um, thinkers who first gave us almost a scientific study of uh, political parasitism, of, of this distinction between producers and parasite work in, in human society, is this French um, economist and pamphleteers uh, um, those of you who comes to Rome and, and go to visit the church of uh, 
St. Louis of the French near Piazza Navona uh, to, to, uh, to uh, see the uh, Caravaggio's uh, pictures um, in, uh, in that church can uh, say hello to Bastia who died in Rome in 1850 and is buried in, the, in, that, in that church. And uh, in, a, in an essay from the economic sophisms, he writes uh, a, a true physiology of, the title of this essay is The Physiology of Plunder, the name uh, Bastia gives to parasitism. And uh, he states very clearly that human beings have, have just two ways to cope with the problem of the satisfaction of, of needs. One is production. He calls it all, all also uh, property and work. Uh, on the other side, there is plunder. And he makes, for the first time in the social sciences, a true um, typology of, of plunder. Plunder by force, like war. Uh, in, uh, and he, he states that, from a scientific point of view, theft and conquest are the same thing. Theft is individual conquest, and conquest is collective theft. So, but n nobody defends thieves, but a lot of people defend conquerors. But there is no difference from a scientific point of, of view from conquest and theft. And the other one is slavery. There are also uh, kinds of plunder by fraud, like theocracy in ancient society, and monopoly, what he calls governmental Plunder, the fact that we can use the power of the state for um, plunder our other countrymen. So uh, why that? Because the, there is a fundamental dis distinction between private transactions, which are free exchanges, and public transactions, those services which are provided by public power. Um, in, this, in public transactions, there is uh, the a cleavage between the service and the payment of the service because nobody pays directly for a public service. We pay through taxation, uh, through an indirect way. So that's the way in which governmental plunder um, has uh, its origin. The fact that uh, we can use political power for private interests and the state is an incentive to use force in order to live at the expense of others like the, the very well known phrase from his essay that a state runs the state is the great fictitious, fictitious entity by which everyone seeks to live at the expense of everyone else so Plunder can be achieved also through political power, not only against, but mainly through political power. The, it's, from a historical point of view, it's interesting that in the uh, dictionary of political economy at the middle of the 19th century, there is the entry parasites uh, and the distinction between three ways three ways of obtaining the um, economic resources, one typical of capitalists, another one typical of workers, and the other one typical of parasites, defined as those people who live on others' capital and work. Just to have a, um, um, to fix the fact that in the French culture, of 19th century, those concepts were well, very well known. And this, uh, Gustave de Molinari was the intellectual heir of Frédéric Bastiat. And he, uh, he's very interesting in his uh, uh, philosophy because he's, he was an economist, he was an economic journalist actually. And uh, in, uh, the, um, in his sketch of human history, it distinguished the fact that at the very beginning, mankind's uh, fight for the survival. And the strong survives and, and the weak perishes. Uh, when human beings begin to fight each uh, one against the other in order to uh, satisfy their needs, they, that's the beginning of political competition and that's the beginning of the state. 
the state from the very beginning is nothing more than a firm of exploitation with a very effective uh, expression, the Molinari um, um, understands the fact that polis, politics uh, is the twin brother of slavery. Politics begin where two struggling, when the victorious group of men doesn't kill anymore the vanquished, but enslave them. That the, 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 the moment in which uh, politics and the states are originated. And he was a rather optimistic guy. He thought that the age of the state will come to an end with capitalism, which would have replaced the, the uh, exploitation of man over man by the production of an abundance, uh, a limited abundance of goods so that um, productive or industrial competition would have replaced um, political competition and were, were, were bound to disappear from human relationships. Uh, um, actually, he, he had this uh, vision, th this view of history as the story of the, the, the liberation of property. Anyway, it's true that, like, like Marx stated, that the history of human society is the story of class struggle. But, and that's true that the history of human society is the, the struggle between exploiters and exploited. But who are the exploiters and who are the exploited? The exploited are those who just want to uh, enjoy their properties. And the exploiters are those who use political power in order to seize uh, others' others' uh, property, um, and that's interesting. The fact that he um, he states that when when mankind discovered agriculture and farming, a uh, man learned to exchange with nature stopped to be the parasite of nature, just to, to, to take from nature, but in order to, uh, to, uh, to, to, be a, to exercise agriculture and farming, he has to exchange to, with nature. So he, he um, begin a, a relationship of, of, of exchange with nature. He, uh, he learned also to uh, to be a parasite of other men. When man stops to be a parasite of nature, begins to be a parasite of other men. That's rather paradoxical, but that's the way it goes according to uh, De Molinari. When um, uh, mankind learn from uh, animal breeding, learn man breeding, slavery. Slavery is the projection of uh, uh, animal breeding into the relationship between, uh, between uh, human beings. Um, De Molinari was, uh, um, uh, was also interested in the working of contemporary uh, democracies, the, the very beginning of democracy in, uh, in uh, countries like France, uh, in the second half of the 19th century. And he knew very well the fact that uh, political struggle within the state is the struggle for a loot. And political parties are group of men who struggle between them in order to, see, to seize the, the loot which is represented by, by the state. And so the greater the loot, the stronger the struggle, the, the higher the incentive to participate to political life in order to seize the loot. Uh, one of my favorite thinkers is this strange uh, uh, Hungarian uh, intellectual who lived uh, in 19th and 20th century. Uh, I found the, the English translation of one of his main books on uh, 
um, on, uh, on the internet, The Interpretation of History, which is a very, very interesting book because he's the first social scientist which, imply, which uses the term parasitism for the political means uh, to, to, for the satisfaction of human needs. He distinguished between parasitism and the direct struggle against murderous and hostile nature. He was not among the founders of the environmentalist movement because he reminds us that the, we live in a habit of scarcity and man in order to produce the needs he uh, the needs the goods he needs has to struggle against nature and he distinguished several kinds of uh, of uh, parasitism and the subtlest way uh, of uh, of kind of parasitism Parasitism is that of the state. Uh, I love this guy because in, uh, in, in this uh, book, The Interpretation of History, there are, there are sentences like, the origin of the state lay not in the family, not in the horde, but simply and solely in the camp. The beginning of the state was not sympathy, but the desire for blood and plunder. It was not any gregarious instinct that brought men together, but the perception that they were more likely to get possession of their neighbor's good together than alone. So the state originates from the collective use of violence. The, at the very beginning, um, that's where the, or, where the state takes origin, from the collective use of violence. And war is an acute and exclusive form of parity Parasitism was alone the cause of the formation of the state, and for for long, it's only uh, even today its principal object. And uh, you can see the the fact that uh, he includes the state as the, the subtlest form of uh, of um, uh, of uh, plunder of parasitism. Uh, It's very interesting because he, he reminds us the fact that taxation is the, the, the substitute for warrant. It's the fact that warlord is the product of, product of armies. Armies are the collective use of violence. Uh, when mankind um, organizes the first armies, Armies need to be feed. Warriors are people who are subtracted from, from agriculture and, and farming, so they have to be feed. But the fact that they are, they are armed guys means also that they have the possibility to force others to feed themselves. So um, what's interesting is that uh, the, this uh, parasitic attitude of the state doesn't Uh, stop with the with the democratic stage of modern state. He th he, he he thought that as the state is the um, the way in which the the way in which the majority is plundered by a parasitic minority. The, in the democratic state, it's quite the opposite. It's the ma majority of people who exploit the minority. And this distinction between uh, minority and majority um, reminds me of the fact that in the, that very age, in the social sciences, sciences there was the, the school of Italian elitists of uh, Gaetano Mosca and uh, Wilfredo Pareto. Uh, Gaetano Mosca, um, his main, uh, his main uh, His main work has been translated in English with the title, the effective title, The Ruling Class. And Gaetano Mosca was the, the guy who stated for, he called, he called himself the first, the first to have stated that in every uh, political organized society, the few rule over the many. That's a constant of human life. And uh, so, in his view, all the history of mankind is the story of a conflict be between the ruling class, the few who's got the, who's got the power, and the rest of society, both wanting, wanting, uh, willing to become part of the ruling class or to replace the ruling class. So, it's true that 
history of mankind is a story of struggle, class, uh, class struggle, but it's a story of class, uh, class struggle uh, around the power. Which object is the power, not the economic exploitation as in the case of Marx. And the other um, guy of the Italian, the school of Italian elitists was Wilfredo Pareto, which um, draws a, um, a very interesting um, distinction between the different ways in which uh, within society men can live at others' expense. Force, for example, illegal violence, or like as Bastian taught us, through legal violence, like in the case where majority, the majority rules, rule can be um, can be uh, oppressive, but in his view there are also what he calls a tortuous way uh, in which the few can plunder the many. That's the main characteristic of, uh, of, the, of the, uh, the, the society in which we live in. Uh, we live in. And uh, he knew very well the fact that classes conflict inside our societies and he knew very well that the different classes have different economic interests. So the main economic interests which uh, contrast classes is the fact that when taxation comes on the scene every class try to shift the burden of taxes on the others and when public expenditure is on the scene every class try to be the beneficiary of public expenditure. So it's taxes and public expenditure which are the causes of the conflict, in, of class struggle inside our societies. Um, like uh, uh, almost in, in a Marxian language, Pareto defined class struggle as the great fact which dominates human history. All human history can be understood as a class struggle, a fight, uh, under two different ways. That of economic competition, which is the productive way in which, in which different classes uh, um, confront each other, and the other way is political parasitism, is a governmental plunder like Bastia uh, taught us. Because he, there are different kinds of plunder. There are different kind in, uh, of, in, in, in different ways uh, by which man can uh, satisfy his needs. One is work, work, but work is painful. The other way is mere violence, but violence can be dangerous. To wait for a wanderer in a wood could, can be can be dangerous. So there's a an easier way, which is democracy participate the the electoral process by which we can uh, we can benefit from the the, the um, from governmental plunder so uh, mm, all those guys uh, has taught us that we are um, we can uh, draw a um, a theory of uh, of um, political parasitism from all these conceptual elements. One, uh, th these are the um, conceptual elements of a more comprehensive theory of uh, political parasit parasitism I'm working on. The first one is political realism, the fact that, uh, which teaches us the fact that power is a social relationship of command and obedience, and that political power is exercised in societies by some men over some other men. There are people who have got power and people who have not power, that main distinction. And mm, one other important uh, insight is the fact that uh, uh, politics originates historically when the victor in war stops killing the defeated enemy in order to enslave him. S slavery is, is thus the twin brother of the political order. Hence, the, very, the origin of every political community is strictly linked with violence, and violence plays a fundamental role in the sub subsequent life of such political uh, 
association. And uh, also another element of, the, of this comprehensive theory of political parasitism is the fact that exchange is a positive sum gain while plunder is a zero sum gain or even in, in its worst um, case even a negative sum, a negative sum gain. And, uh, another important element of this uh, theory is the relevance of scarcity in, uh, in um, in human society, and uh, another one is the fact that we can draw a real libertarian class struggle theory. I mean the fact that we can understand human history as a real struggle between different and conflicting classes as a, 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 a useful tool, tool to grasp the true nature and development of, of our society. Uh, just to to, to, to conclude this uh, presentation, can we derive any sociological laws from this theory of political parasitism? Uh, we can try to, to, to do, um, to, to derive some, some sociological laws uh, from political parasitism. You know, we have the, 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 the school of Italian elitists which uh, teaches us the fact that the few can exploit the many. Uh, the democratic state according to Nordau as I, as I um, said before, uh, in the democratic state according to Nordau it's the many who exploit the few. Uh, and, but th there is a paradoxical fact uh, that uh, Bastia and Pareto uh, teach us the fact that actually in democratic society it's the many who try to exploit the many, because every, every social group try to participate, to plundering, rather than be the victim of plunder. And uh, that's what we can call the system of mutual plunder. Actually, the uh, present democratic society are a system of mutual plunder. Uh, that's what a, an Italian philosopher of law, Bruno Leoni, called the legal war of all against all. And uh, from what I, I try to, to, to present here, we can confront two different views on the, on the use of these tools of political parasitism. One the, is the optimistic view of Frederic Bastiat, and one, the other one is the pessimistic view of Wilfred Pareto. Bastiat was a rather optimistic guy. He was, he was sure that both plunder by force and plunder by fraud should stop in a way or in another. Uh, he was very faithful of the fact that in the long run, the uh, parasitism by force sh uh, should be stopped by the fact that in the long run, the force would pass from the, uh, to the side of the many. And he was also optimistic on the uh, intellectual nature of, uh, 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 intelligent nature of man, the fact that um, the victims of plunder in the long run will be aware of the fact of being victims of plunder and so they would be able to stop the, this process. In contrast to the uh, optimistic insight of Frederic Bastiat stands the pessimistic insight of Wilfredo Pareto who was a, um, who, who um, stated that, that under a system of mutual plunder like the, the one we live in in our democratic society there is no escape in the fate of man or you are either hunter or prey you cannot choose. You cannot, you cannot choose. If you stop, um, if you do decide to be neutral, uh, you'll be like a lamb in a, among the wolves. So there is no way to, be, to, to, re, to, stay, to, to be neutral. In a in a in a uh, in the system of universal of mutual plunder, and the other way is that the fact that 
he, contrary to Bastia, he was um, pessimistic on the fact that the victims of parasitism could be aware of being the victim of parasitism and could have the force to, to stop parasitism. Because in the uh, in, soci in human societies, the interests which prevails are the organized interests, like those of lobbies, while the non-organized interests, like those of taxpayers, are bound to be defeated in this system of mutual plunder. So uh, Pareto was convinced the only way to stop parasitism was the, the fact that parasites are enough clever and enough far-sighted to understand that if they um, go too far in plundering the victims of, of, of this uh, political parasitism, society as a whole will be ruined and so themselves will be ruined. So there is no, uh, no way to stop this fact otherwise than uh, uh, betting on the, on the clever attitude and the farsightness of, of the, of the um, plunderers, plunderers themselves. And if we consider that the motto of our ruling class in our democratic societies is that in the long run we are all dead. I think that unfortunately Pareto was quite right in the fact that we, we, it's very difficult to, to be optimistic, or optimistic on the future of our, of our society. In, in, let me conclude uh, this, uh, this uh, presentation with the reflection of, of, of the, on the fate of capitalism. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, the problem with capitalism derived from its success, from the success of capitalism itself. The free market economy has produced an abundance of goods and services that is unprecedented, unprecedented in human history. Such wealth not only provides a formerly unimaginable standard of living, but it is an incentive for parasitic attitudes and behaviors. The more social wealth that exists in society, the greater is the temptation to acquire it through political parasitism. The capitalism is thus the victim of its own economic success. This is why the contest between producers and parasites is a never-ending story, and parasitism is the typical attitude of the state, hence the only way to defend the free market and our liberty from any kind of plunder is to totally dissolve the state. Thank you.